So this will be a perfect palate cleanser because there is absolutely no technical content whatsoever in this talk. Um, so you, you can enjoy the technical talks afterwards. You want to leave because there's no technical content. You know, I'll uh, let you know. Well, maybe there's technical content, right? So there's uh, tax code technical content in this talk. Um, so, so I work for this organization called the Software Freedom Conservancy. Uh, we're a charity. Uh, it's what the IRS calls a 501c3 charity. Um, it's the best kind of charity uh, because it's not only tax deductible donations and the organization pays no taxes as well. So it's tax tax free on both ends of the revenue stream. Um, the neat thing about working for a charity, and the reason I love my job, is because while most of you probably work for for-profit companies, how many people work for a for-profit company or something, right, okay. So when you wake up in the morning, technically speaking, now I know this is, you try to find ways around this so you can actually do cool things with computers and not spend your time doing what your boss says, but technically speaking, when you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to deliver shareholder value. Because, or deliver like good value to the company for the people who own it. Well, for or for a customer. For, for me, I have to wake up in the morning and serve the public good. In fact, the IRS will revoke our tax deductible status and charitable status if we don't serve the public good. Now, our specific mission within that is to help open source and free software projects get things done. Uh, I used to be a developer years ago. I actually wrote C++ once upon a time. 1997 was probably the last time I wrote a line of C++ code. People were still arguing whether the standard template library was a good thing or not. Uh, maybe people still are. I don't know. But uh, that was the, that it, it was a very new thing in those days. Um, but I realized that all these open source projects had this problem, that they didn't have someone to handle stuff that developers don't like to handle. Um, and being a masochist, I decided to help all these projects handle things other than coding. So I gave up a life of software development to help software developers not worry about things that aren't software development. So this is a NASCAR slide of all of our, not all of, but most, most many of our member projects. Um, Boost is on there, obviously. And Boost, in fact, became one of our earliest projects to inquire. Uh, the, my timer went out. Um, the, they required first in 2006. We were formed in April 2006. In August 2006, Boost came to ask us to join. They didn't actually join until mid-2007. And the main request was to handle the fiscal details of this conference. So BoostCon, now C++ Now, became the first conference that we handled for a member project. And we've handled all the back office support for that. Uh, John Kelb is now the on-site organizer, does most of the work, really. I mean, he's the guy really doing the work. But when the bills have to get paid, he sends them to us, and we get them paid. So that's not the only thing we do. Uh, historically, Boost, as a project, has only ever asked us for that particular work, generally speaking. Uh, we do a lot more for projects than just that. And we'd like to do more, not just for Boost, but for open source C++ generally. Our mission is relatively broad. We can take on any task that benefits the public good by improving and promoting and increasing uh, usefulness of open source software. So if there is a C++ open source thing, we can help with it. And we can do that through either the Boost membership. We have other projects that are written in C++. Inkscape and Godot are probably two of the more flagship uh, member projects we have that are written uh, substantially in C++. And there are lots of other things we could do for Boost, for C++, for all sorts of projects. One of the things we do is we handle legal and licensing issues for projects. This comes up more often than you think with Boost, uh, because if you're not a licensing geek, you probably don't know that Boost license is very, very weird. Um, it is a unique license that no one else uses. Uh, and I've met, had many conference calls with big corporations who were afraid to adopt Boost because its license didn't look like MIT or something else. So that's the thing we do. But probably the thing I'm most proud of that we do is we raise money to fund open source software development. And as an example, our Godot project has three people working full time now. Uh, we help them launch a Patreon uh, site. And they're raising money through Patreon and other sources where it's funding them to work on the project. Now, it's a, you know, a project that's easy to get funded in a place like Patreon because it's a gaming engine. Uh, but it is truly funding open source software development with donations. We're big fans of that. We'd like to do more of that in the C++ community. So if you have ideas about that, let us know. And there's a full list of our projects. Um, we're really the only charity doing this work. There are a lot of trade associations, which are business-controlled entities that pursue a common business entry, interest. But we're the only charity that does this kind of thing, really, just as a general fiscal sponsor organization for open source projects. We'd like to do more of that. So there's a lunchtime discussion tomorrow that I'm uh, leading. It's mostly going to be Q&A about what Conservancy does, what more we can do to help C++ by, uh, by promoting open source and charitable stuff in the C++ world. So come talk to us about that tomorrow at lunch. Thank you.
Five, one second left.